I'm, I'm bored of seeing art which is made for me. Like, let's make art for people who don't normally get to access art. I don't want to see an advertisement or a giant poster about some shitty fast fashion. I'd rather see like something sick that my mates made. I think this exhibition is going to be a shitload of fun. Kind of it just encompass all three of us as good, weird people. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Session. Enough of oh, yeah. Should we start shaving? Yes. Uh, okay. We ready? Let's start, start, start the there. Like it's an opening. An opening to you. Right down the middle. Go down yeah. the middle. Do it, um, Brittany. Do it, Brittany. This older lady turns around to me and was just like, "No one likes a jiver." <laughs> this is. I'm pretty sure this is like King Giz. Like. And I really like the idea of making art like that's only accessible to people who can't usually access it. Like with the IGA Peep Show, I made the heights for really, really tall people. <laughs> Snakes. <laughs> and if you're in a wheelchair or if you're a smallish child. Fuck it. Like, I'm, I'm bored of seeing art which is made for me. Like, let's make art for people who don't normally get to access art. I'll, I'll make something new and I'll usually... <laughs> I'll usually show my mum or my best mate and they are both so hard on me, it's great. Just the consistency of their kind of like, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, this is what I think you could have done better. Like it's so critical but it's so valuable and it also makes me really really conscious of my style. Because for a long time I didn't really see myself as having a style at all. I think they were just able to like pick it apart for me and be like, here's an answer. And I wasn't ever able to see it because I was too busy kind of being engaged with the work. Just rub it up, rub a dub dub. <laughs> with Casey's work where he just kind of occurred, like he's like, oh yeah, that's kind of funny, I'll do that. You know, and then he makes this huge fuck off painting. It's amazing. Oh, one of Casey's parties recently. And he's like, oh yeah, I've got a few paintings. And I walk up into his bedroom and there is like, this beautiful painting like he has the most amazing eye with color and I love him like explaining it because he's like oh I just pick two and go for it and I'm like this is so refreshing to see people who like are just like yeah fuck it I'm just gonna do this because I want to do this it doesn't mean I need to know about it and I'll figure it out on the way the whole time I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing I just had a couple a couple of you knows in my belly and I decided to get a little creative that idea of being comfortable in your own skin I think that's always been the kind of the driving thing of these of these pieces. Actually, this one this one was a lot of fun. So this is my friend Trey um, in drag as Stone. She's amazing. He is also amazing. I haven't really explored my sexuality properly until I came to Melbourne. This is just one more step in like getting more personally influenced by uh, drag culture and that sort of energy and stuff. While it's also a celebration for that, it's also not that fun of a piece, like, you know, she's ashing a ciggy on her wrist right now. I, I wanted to steer quite away from the self-harm. It was more of just like a, a feel something, feel liberated and feel kind of broken, but also feel yourself. I don't know, it's a little bit hard for me to construct that exact sentence that I want to, you know, punch home with that. It's the first time in my life where I've had to think about, you know, projecting my work or my internalized anything to other people. Um, and if we bring it back to the doors, which I'm really excited about, because it's still not done and that kind of freaks me out because it's me really excited. I really like the emotion behind that one because it really is like, like who doesn't, who hasn't empathized with the idea of a hangover day in bed, eating macros, watching some B-list horror movie on Netflix, right? And like that, that one is probably the most fun I've had painting thus far because like that's fucking me, that's everyone, you know? And you can feel sexy while not feeling sexy. <laughs> is it delicious? <laughs> it's, really just, it's, not. it's pretty delicious. And I get bored of things. So like I wanna try t new techniques. I wanna try a new narrative. I wanna work on things that I haven't approached yet. Yeah, I really wanna dive more into queer, um, POC, uh, and just kind of 
painting things that make me happy and make people talk. I think that's a really big thing is I want people to be able to have a conversation. I don't just want it to be like some passing another thing on the wall. Like I want, I want that to actually mean something to someone. I think that's also the drive that keeps me painting in the first place. I think each of them speak to me differently. I hope they each speak to different people differently. Terry is fucking great. Like, she's so funny and her work really just speaks her. She's so fucking quirky. I, like, I hate using that word, but she's just like, yeah, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And um, it fucking shows in her work. I think very similar to me, just paints whatever the like whatever the fuck she wants. Hairy legs, they're fucking dick spewing spews everywhere. I just like, I love, I love that. It's fun drawing lots of dicks on things and regimes. It's funny. It's just like, you know. I must have been really horny when I, <laughs> the night I came up with the characters. It's kind of nice because the stickers are kind of like low pressure. I think when I work on like canvases and paper, in the beginning it was really intimidating, especially because it's like so fucking expensive. It's like, you know, $80 for a canvas. Whereas like the stickers were like, I got like a hundred, 30 bucks. So I was like, I can do whatever, it doesn't matter. It was kind of really freeing and then I was just making all these little creatures. Yeah, it's actually really fun like going out on little missions. Like, I call it missions, it's just a sticker, you can do it in the daytime. But like going out at night and just like smoking and drinking and going, yeah, I gotta put a sticky up. And then it's fun putting them, I guess it like, it feeds off of itself. Cause I drew them kind of like in front of the tote cause I love going to the tote. And then like the tote like reposted it on Instagram and I was like, oh my God, the fame. MTV Cribs, <laughs> welcome to my courtyard. Titty monster, fucking flames. The thing about it, the thing about street art is it is kind of, it is like a fuck you to like the man and to capitalism because advertisements are constantly being just thrown in our faces and it's like, I don't want to see an advertisement or a giant poster about some shitty fast fashion. I'd rather see like something sick that my mates made. So it definitely influences what I do. I was thinking about this yesterday. I was like, fuck, when did I start doing it? And I think I was like bored in retail or something. And I had this like um, little sort of lookbook of all these like, you know, pretty models and stuff. And I was like, what if like monsters just like took over and like chopped their legs off and collected all their shoes. And I was just drawing all these monsters. Sorry, I'm looking down. <laughs> or just that's when I think, I look down to see my thoughts anyway. Um, I really, really value that everyone who is making art doesn't take themselves too seriously. I put my stuff on public display. Uh, I'm ready for some dickheads to tell me I'm being a dickhead. I'm ready for some love and some appreciation and I'm ready to have a conversation.